Hey guys and welcome back. My name is Rachel O'Leary and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. As you guys know outside I really like to use carnivorous plants as bog plants in my bins to control some of the summer insects. Well I made an impulse purchase when I was getting new uh, pitcher plants for out there and I accidentally bought a species that doesn't do well in that sort of wet environment. And this is a Nepenthe species. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous, but I should have done my research a little more thoroughly first. The good news is this species does really well in windowsills and is not a t particularly difficult one to keep. So we're going to set up a little terrarium style thing for it and see if we can't keep it going healthy. Now this is Nepenthe sanguine which is a highland species. And there's two main types of Nepenthes. Now there's two main types of the Nepenthes, the highland and the lowland. The lowland are below 3,000 sea level and the highlands are generally 3,000 to 10,000 feet above sea level. Um, I believe that this is a highland species. Over 70% of the species are highland species, which means they like things really warm during the day. And then they have a cool off period at night. And while the humidity is high, it's not like rainforest high. These guys generally grow on like slopes and ridges and areas that are humid, but not like crazy humid. So it's very, um, it's, it's a good choice to be able to grow indoors and not specifically in a greenhouse. So there's a few things that are really important with these. Um, and I would like to mention that I'm, I got all my information. I'm new with all this stuff, but my husband got me this really fantastic book. And if you're at all interested in carnivorous plants and keeping them, this has everything. So it's, it's like a Bible for carnivorous plants. And I've really been enjoying reading it. Um, so the couple things that you need is really good drainage because these guys don't like their feet wet. They don't like a bog environment. They like humidity, but not to be too wet. So I just showed you guys, I'll show you guys outside what I did with my lava rock. Uh, my friend Alex gave me a whole bunch of this, so I just took it outside with a mall and beat it up a little bit. Um, I'll show you that right now, it's pretty simple. So one of the things with the Nepenthe species is that they're not very good bog plants, meaning they don't like their feet wet. So since I'm gonna be putting this one into a glass terrarium, I grabbed some lava rock and I'm just going to pulverize it a bit to put a layer of fine um, lava in the bottom. And I'm only using this because I have it. You could use gravel. You could use anything that just provides a way for the plant to be elevated out of that water so that their roots don't get too wet. So I just want this to be about the consistency of gravel. And I'm just using, I think, a five pound sledge, six pound. Makes this job really easy. Now I could theoretically leave these whole, but I want them to sit nice and flat in the bottom of the jar that I've chosen. As you can see, just have a nice mix of lava rock all crushed up to put in the bottom. So let's go get started. And the next step then is to put my rubble into the pot, um, place the substrate, place the plant, and then I think I'm going to put some, some moss on the surface uh, in order to just make it more interesting. Now, as I mentioned, one of the important things is that these guys, you know, don't like things super wet. The other thing is, is that they don't like super, super bright conditions. So it's actually gonna work out great in my house. Uh, we don't get a whole lot of direct light and I don't have a lot of space to put plants. 
So I think if I put this in my living room, it'll get the three hours of sun it needs a day. Uh, in fact, if you're growing these outdoors, if you're in a warmer climate than mine, you need to grow them under 50% shade cloth so that they don't get too much sun. These pitchers will turn like a really dark red uh, if they're getting too much sun. This particular type should have this like orangish, orangish pink color to them. And so far it's doing fine. I've had it for a week now and I haven't killed it yet. So that's something. Pitcher plants um, really require low TDS water. And fortunately for me, my water out of the tap has a TDS of around 100. And with these guys, a lot of people have to use distilled water or collect rainwater in order to water them properly uh, because the TDS of the water that they're, they need to receive has to be under 150. Mine's at 100, so I'm pretty good. I'll still use some rainwater, but that also explains why my pitcher plants outside did so well. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get started. I'm just going to put some of this crushed up lava rock in the bottom. I think I'm going to leave the, the plant in its pot for now, uh, simply because they like to climb over the edges of things and it's not really big. I can always repot it later. I'm going to put some of this um, carnivorous plant potting mix around it, which is um, a mix of things. It is peat, it is bark. Um, and long fiber sphagnum moss. So it's like orchid bark, all kinds of stuff in here. And that just provides really good drainage and fosters humidity for these guys. And then I'm gonna take some of my moss and just place it on top, see what happens. Now I'll have to trim this that way, but I think it'll look neat to have the green around it. Now, as I mentioned outside, you could use gravel, you could use anything you want in the bottom of your, your bowl. I found this bowl at Home Goods for like $8. So I figured I'd just use that and I had this and I had this and I had this. So I figured we'd give it a go. By putting this layer in the bottom, it'll make it so that when I mist it with the water every day, that any excess water will settle down there and you all get humidity creeping up the sides, but the plant won't be too wet. Or at least I hope not. Now I got this plant. And I got this plant on Etsy um, from a place I really liked. I was actually super impressed. Let me show you. I got it from, um, now I got this plant on Etsy as well as several others from a company called Blue Ridge Exotics and I'm super impressed. I wish I would have done an unboxing for you guys and actually in the future I think I'll get some more and I'll probably do one then because they really set an excellent standard on how to ship these delicate carnivorous species. They were wrapped in cotton, they had these bamboo skewers around them and cups to protect the different pitchers so it was really beautifully done. And the other cool thing is that it came with... Um, a certificate that they are um, free of injurious plant pests which to me is important and really shows the sort of standard that this company um, sets so I'll put a link to their their Etsy page down below but I was just absolutely blown away at the quality of their packaging and the size of the plants I got and not only that but when I reached out to them to let them know or I reached out to them and they were able to give me more information on this particular plant and how I can keep it properly. So I'm hoping this works out. They were very supportive. Customer service was excellent. And you know, in today's day and age, it's really nice to find someone that so obviously cares about the plants they're sending. I also got this mix from them. And I got it because I was expecting these plants to come in little teeny tiny cups of inappropriate size. And I thought I was going to have to repot everything, but I think they'll be okay in this size, at least for this season. Now, this particular type of carnivorous plant does not require a dormancy period. So, um, I'm not sure it's, it's as critical, the time period when you split them. My other types, my, my other Saracenia pitchers, you should only split them in the early spring or during their dormant period. Uh, not during the prime um, growing season. So 
So I'm just putting this on here mainly so it looks a little better. You know, it just gives it a more natural appearance. And all of this media will also help to retain the humidity in the bowl for these guys. Um, I'll have to mist them probably daily with this species as well. You're not supposed to put them in a bowl of water. You are supposed to um, mist them. So I have this mister that I'll fill up to be able to just spray them down each day. And then I have this um, spiky moss, just tissue culture. I'm just going to rinse out the gel. And I got the idea from doing that, of doing this from that book I have. It, that uh, Savage Garden suggested that this was a perfectly acceptable thing to do in a terrarium for these carnivorous plants. The moss will grow because of the humidity. And I think eventually it'll look pretty cool. Now, as I mentioned, I will have to trim it. And all I'm doing is basically laying it in the top of this substrate. We'll see how it does. If it doesn't do well, oh well. If it does great, perfect. But I'm really, really enjoying all these um, carnivorous plants. So I'm, I'm hoping that this does well for me because I'd really like to do work more with them. I think it's pretty fascinating how they work. So I placed it here on the stand my husband made for me um, that I'm still working on. I have another project up there that you guys will be seeing soon. I've been gathering together plants to make it. I'm going to make something else to go here. But for now, this one can sit here. And because it's in the, in the path of my sliding glass doors, it should get a decent amount of light each day. And hopefully the kittens will leave it alone. Um, but I'll give this a few weeks and then update you guys and let you know how it went, if it was a success or failure. As always, thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this little uh, departure from what I normally give you guys. As always, let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions. Make sure you stop by my Facebook, my Instagram, and my website, MsJinx.com, where you can see my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano.